help yourself to some tea and cakes. They are spirit cakes, so you won't gain any weight. Of course, <laughs> you won't lose any either. Hey guys, so today we're going to take a look at a cake featured in the popular sequel to After Our Last Airbender, The Legend of Korra. Fortunately, the cake seems pretty easy. It's basically an angel food cake filled with some sweet whipped cream frosting and some fruit on top. It's pretty straightforward, and even those amateur bakers shouldn't have much trouble making it. So with that being said, let's start. So first things first, you're going to want to preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And once that's done, we're going to make the cake layers. So grab a large bowl and add 2.5 cups of flour, 2 teaspoons of baking soda, and 1 teaspoon of salt. Then briefly whisk those grease together for a couple of seconds. Now grab a stand mixer fitted with a paddle attachment, and then add 1.5 cups of sugar, 2 thirds cup of butter, a teaspoon of vanilla extract, and 3 tablespoons of vegetable oil. Then mix those ingredients together at medium low speed until the mixture is light in color and slightly thick. Then add in 4 eggs one at a time and make sure to occasionally stop the mixture and scrape down the bowl to ensure any leftover egg gets incorporated into the sugar mixture. Then transfer the batter to two 8 inch cake pans and fill them both until they're about halfway full. And if you want to, you can even add the batter using a rubber spatula to ensure the cake layers come out nice and flat. Now place the cake tins in the oven and let them bake for 45 minutes. Once the cakes are done baking, take them out of the oven and let them cool down for about 20 minutes. Now that the cakes are nice and cool, and won't burn your hand, take them out of the pans by flipping them over on top of your hand, and then set them aside. So next up, we are going to make the frosting. It's not really cake frosting, but I'll get more into that in a bit. So to make the frosting, add in 3 cups of heavy whipping cream, a teaspoon of oil extract, and 3 melted marshmallows into a large bowl. Now I know adding marshmallows sounds kind of crazy, but we're actually going to use them as a sort of stabilizer. The marshmallows will make sure the frosting doesn't fall apart or just simply slide off the cake. Anyway, once you've added in all the ingredients I mentioned earlier, beat them with the hand mixer at medium high speed until the mixture is fluffy and holds a stiff peak, kind of like whipped cream. This usually takes around 3 minutes. Once the frosting is done, just go ahead and set it aside for now. So moving on, grab one of the cake layers and then using a cake cutter, cut the upper layer of the cake off. And then repeat this step for the other cake layer as well. The cake layer might be a little bit uneven, but it's totally fine, because you can fix it by shaving it down using the cake cutter or a knife, whichever one's easier. Now once the cake layers are nice and flat, place about 3 cups of frosting on top of one of the layers, and spread it until it forms a somewhat even layer. And it's totally fine if some of the frosting falls off to the sides of the cake, because we're going to cover the sides later anyways. Once you have one layer of frosting, place another cake layer on top, kind of as if you're making a sandwich. Then add some frosting to the sides of the cake and scrape it with a pastry scraper until it's even. And it's totally fine if it doesn't come out totally perfect, nothing really is, especially when it comes to baking in general. Now add one more final layer to the top of the cake and smooth it out using a frosting knife. So now we're going to create a barrier between the frosting and the air. So to do this, grab some crushed graham crackers and simply toss them at the sides of the cake until it's completely covered. Okay, so now we're almost done. So to finish frosting the cake, grab a piping bag fitted with a star tip, and then pipe a border around the edges of the cake to create a neat little design. Once that's done, slice a few strawberries directly in half, then peel and slice the kiwi until you get a couple of thick slices. Once you're done slicing all the fruit, decorate the top of the cake by placing down a few kiwi slices, then place down a few strawberries on top of the kiwi, and then add in a handful of blueberries on top. And then realize I put the strawberries on the wrong way, so just pretend I did that part right. And the final step is to gently brush a little bit of warmed up apricot jam on top of the fruit. And once that's done, that's pretty much it. That's all you need to do to create a perfect spirit world cake. 